Obviously, you need no introduction, uh, Robbie, but let's um, formally introduce you. Robbie is an Irish former professional football player who is a prolific goal scorer who played in different leagues in Europe, America, and Asia. Keane is the most capped player in the history of the Republic of Ireland national team with 143 goals since his first in 1998. He's also their leading scorer with 69, 67 international goals to his name. He's represented Ireland at the 2002 World Cup, 2012 European Championships, and Euro 2016. Keane has been the captain of the Irish national team from 2006 to 2016. Um, thank you, Robbie. And where are you? Where are you today, Robbie? Yeah, hi guys. Uh, good to see you. Um, I'm back. I'm back in Ireland uh, with the family. So uh, it's been it's been a nice few weeks. Of course, obviously the, under the circumstances, uh, but it's certainly nice to be back home with the family. And you have uh, two sons, correct? Right? Yeah, uh, Robert, who's 11, actually on Sunday, and Hudson, who's who's four. So as you can imagine. It's uh, it's quite hectic in this house for the last the last few weeks trying to entertain and trying to keep them busy. So uh, it, it's been good. They've been they've been coping quite well. Of course, uh, 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 two young boys they're they're missing their friends and and, and missing being around uh, you know kids their own age to uh, to, to play with. But uh, we're trying to do everything that we can just to keep them keep them occupied. And, and of course, Robert who's eleven who uh, loves loves football. So uh, eleven sorry on Sunday and. Um, um, mostly out in the garden, you know, kicking the ball around with him. Amazing. Um, and I also met before your beautiful wife, Claudine, also. So it must be a special time to be with your family. Yeah, of course, because I, I'm obviously, I travel quite a lot. In, in, you know, obviously with Middlesbrough, I'm over there, you know, obviously the full time and uh, I get back as, as much as I can and the family come over as much as they can. So uh, this has been, you know, under the, these crazy circumstances, um, it has been nice to, to spend time to, uh, together and, as I said, to, to be with the kids and, and, and the wife and, and just doing uh, normal things as, as you would as a, you know, I, I, as a family. As I said before, of course, it's, it's hectic at times. Uh, kids killing each other, so I was trying to calm them down, playing, playing FIFA and what have you. So, uh, but it has been good. It's been, it's been very good and it's, uh, it's, it's given me a little bit of, uh, you know, for the last year has been, been, as I said, there's been a lot of travelling, what I've been doing obviously for the last, you know, 20 odd years playing playing football and now on the coaching side of things, which is completely different because you're, you're fairly busy. Um, so it has been nice in, in terms of spend a little bit of, you know, quality time with them. If you don't mind me asking when you play FIFA, what teams do you guys play? I don't play. I don't play. You play? No, I, I, I played a couple of times with Robert and he absolutely battered me, so. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't play anymore. So I, he's, he's teaching young Hudson now how to play. Who's, who's four, um, five in October. So uh, I think he's, he's given him a few beatings as well. So as you can imagine, the few screams that I can hear now and again when I'm trying to uh, watch TV, I watch games, which I'm quite busy uh, doing, watching players and what have you. Well, um, I also want to introduce our good friend Rick Delacroix, who put this together. Rick was a former associate director of a team that you played for, Tottenham, and a distributor of Hublot behind several of the brand's football initiatives, both in Latin America, with Colombia players Falco and James Rodriguez, and the Mexican national team, along with the football legend Pele, and many, many more. Um, Rick, thank you so much um, for putting this together today. Respect. My legend, one of my favorite players, Robbie Keane, and one of the nicest guys in football. Pleasure to be here tonight. Hey Rick, how are you doing, pal? Good mate. How are you? How's the family? Yeah, all good. Yours? Yeah, you know what it is, mate. Kids get older. I mean, like you said, on this, um, I get smashed. On, you know, I, I, with these controllers, I can't play, mate. I, I, my right foot was okay. My left foot was terrible. So, with fingers, I'm the worst. You know. Listen, mate, I've <laughs> seen you. I've seen you in goal. You, you can play in, in goal. You're a good goalkeeper. Thank you, pal. Many years ago, and seven stone lighter. <laughs> So, Robbie, um, how is quarantine life, especially in Ireland? Um, how's that going? Yeah, I think like like everywhere, we've been lucky. Where you know, so, we're, uh, um, how is quarantine? Our government, have, you know, locked things down fairly fairly quickly. So, of course, we've we uh, 
have a lot of uh, patients and what have you, not as many as, as other people around the world. Um, we've been we've been looking in that sense, but as I said, the government been fairly strict and, and locking things down, uh, which was obviously the right thing to do. Um, so it's been it, it's been okay. Uh, I think the numbers are certainly coming uh, coming down. I just think like anybody now is just to you know stay home and stay safe and and, and let the frontline workers uh, do their jobs and hopefully not just Ireland but around the world that can be you know certainly out of this pandemic because you know it's for for life in general for people you know mentally uh, for the football side of things as well. Of course I'm involved in that, but just in general work. You know, people are desperate to go back to a little bit of, of normality, normality. But I think the most important thing is that is to make sure that everything is 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 100% forced before we can do that. Because these frontline workers are putting their lives on risk. Uh, you know, to, to to save their lives, which is incredible. Uh, what what they're doing. So we have to you know, do everything we can. It's not hard, is it, really, to stay at home? Um, I know it can be frustrating at times, but you know, it could be a lot worse. And do you see light at the end of the tunnel in Ireland? Um, are things getting much better? Are they easing the restrictions? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think uh, next. I think next on the 18th, I think of May, um, we're starting to open golf courses. I think and a bit more interaction with with, with family. Uh, I think maybe it's four, four people out, outside of of your your immediate family, uh, which would be which would be obviously nice. So you know, people have been good in Ireland. If the We've stuck together as Irish people always do. Um, and can you see me, guys? Yes, yeah, see you loud. You, you're great. Uh, so I just something came up there. I just want to. Don't worry about that. That's a poll we take where people fill out. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Um, so yeah, so we, we've we've uh, the, it's been great. Uh, it's the, the Irish people have been been fantastic in terms of uh, how they've reacted, uh, which I, I wouldn't expect anything anything less. So, uh, as I said, like anybody now, we're just looking forward to, you know, in, in a couple of months, hopefully, for things to, uh, to get back to a little bit of normality. And Rick, um, how about Switzerland? We've gotten some updates from you, and it seems like it's getting better and better with more factories opening up. How's everything going? Yeah, I mean, it's starting very slowly. Obviously, you know, the, all these social distancing laws and regulations were an absolute necessity that we don't have a second uh, wave, as they call it. Um, you know, factories are open up and, you know, hairdressers. I got buzzed yesterday. So, um, you know, it's good. You know, people have got to get out there, got to go back to work, got to work, you know, move the money. So there's a light, there's a light. And uh, we've just got to be supportive of society and, uh, you know, every profession, be it a taxi driver, a restaurant, uh, a store, you know, open up, you know, and, but just respect the rules, you know? Robbie, um, you're obviously in Ireland and the Irish people are very sociable. Uh, there's more pubs per square miles than any other country in Europe. Do you think people will go back to their social habits after isol isolation? Um, I think, yeah, um, I think people will look at it maybe a little bit different, slightly different. I think that they, they got used to being at home, used to doing stuff that probably that he wouldn't have done before. Uh, used to making barbecues and, 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 and stuff like that, or having a bit of uh, more family time. I think, of course, you're going to have a lot of people that will do that, but I definitely think it's going to open a few people's eyes in, in, in terms of, uh, of, of going forward. I think it'll take a lot, a long time for things to, you know, fully get back to you know, the way it was before. Will we ever get there? I'm, I'm not sure, but I definitely think it's definitely going to open people's eyes for sure. Um, a few uh, days ago, Rick um, and had the luxury of having another soccer legend on, and I asked him the question about um, the season, the football season. Should uh, football finish the season? What's your and what is your opinion? What's your thoughts on that? Um, it's a tough one, isn't it? Because I think, as I said before, first and foremost, you know, it's a uh, we have to make sure. That the people on the front line are safe. They're, they're doing, they're doing a tremendous job, as I said before, to make their, you know, uh, lives. Uh, they're putting their lives at risk, to, you know, to save us, and which is an incredible uh, job that they're doing. So, I think first and foremost, that has to be sorted out. Uh, would everyone like the football to get back? Absolutely. 
there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no question about that. Uh, everyone misses football. I think you realise now when, when it's gone, how much you actually really do do miss it. But things have to be 100%. I think for for it to get back to to some uh, normality, we play behind closed doors. The problem is with with that is if that if you've got one player or a couple of players uh, that has underlying problems that may go away and may go home to to their parents or whoever it may be, and uh, catch the virus, what happens then? The club, the, the clubs will have to close down. The, um, what, do we start back again? So I don't really know the answer. There's been a lot of debates, of course, in Sky over the last, over the last few, uh, few months. Playing football behind closed doors would be difficult uh, as, as a you know, player for 20-odd years. You know, you play for the crowds. They're the ones that you go to play for. And to not have that would be a very, very strange feeling for uh, certainly for for all the all the players it would almost feel like a, a behind closed doors pre season game uh, with, with, with no fans and they're never really they're never really great. So um, can I see you getting back? I think because of the finances, I think people will will try and do everything that they can uh, to get it back. But unfortunately, you know the virus is in charge here. No one else is in charge of this. And if the virus is, is not gone, I just can't see a way where the league is going to start back again. Um, and I know there's, there's, there's a lot of talk about what about if Liverpool you know, should win the league. Of course, everybody knows that Liverpool should win the league. We, we, we know that. The 20 odd points clear. Um, but the problem is not Liverpool. Everyone knows that. It's the, it's the relegation. And then it's a knock on effect then. Well, the championship and then the lower the, lo- the lower league teams, um, they need they need football to come back for the finances for, for them because they could go under. Uh, as as we know, there's a lot of clubs as, as four load, um, you know, middle in, in, included, and a lot of other teams with, which they have to because if they want want to survive. So you worry about the the league ones, the league two. You know, we've seen it was the last year Berry, you know, if great, you know little club in Manchester had to go under because of finances. Now, we don't want to see, I don't think anybody wants to see, you know, these great little clubs or big clubs, you know, going under because of, of finances. So something, something has to be done. Uh, from who? I'm, I'm not sure. As if That's why I said I think that they'll be desperate to, to, to get the football back. But uh, you can only get the football back if, it, if it's warranted by, by, by the government and, and, and the medical people. Yeah. You know, let me ask you if I can, just to interrupt here. I mean, yeah, you're a legend. You you played, you probably played four big crowds, and that motivated you as a player. How could that affect without having the fans, the crowds, certain teams? I mean, would that have an enormous effect if Liverpool would win or not win? Could it? Could there be a shock that all of a sudden they're not playing in front of the cop and not mm-hmm. win? On well, um, I think for Liverpool, no, because I mean they're only I think two games is it away from actually winning, win the league. So f- for them, no. Other teams, yeah. So you're fighting the relegation, for example. You know, having that 12 man, as we say, and getting the crowd behind you. You know, going to going to difficult places. You know, you know, look if you look at Bournemouth, for example, there that's a tough little ground to go to. 12,000 people, um, but it's in- it can be intimidating because players are not used to going there. So, you know, would it help them? We have the crowds? Absolutely would. And that's, that's you know, filtering down, of course, to the, to, to the championship as well. So, it, will, it would be very, very strange. But I can only see, I would love, obviously, to get back the fans back. But I can't see it happen, you know, very, very soon. I think it, it probably will be, a, um, it will be that the... the the games will, will be played behind closed doors, un, unfortunately. So maybe just to get the, the season back up and running, uh, to get the, the revenue back in from, from, from TV. You know, if there's no fans there, of course, you're going to get a lot of people watching, watching the game. So will that, uh, that revenue from, from, the, um, from Sky and BT and what have you, you know, that will certainly help uh, some, some of the clubs. But it definitely won't be the same. But we're on, you know, different times. You know, things have changed. So we just have to move on with the times if that's the case. Rick, um, you were involved with many of the football players in Hublot. Pele, Nardano, James Rodriguez. 
Tell us um, a little about how you put the thought process to put some of these partnerships together and tell us a little more about that. You know, it's not really down to me. I think, you know, you've got to thank um, John claude Vive, Ricardo Guadalupe that were, you know, obviously they ran the brand and I was a bit of a networker in the, in the picture. Having been involved with Spurs and, and brought a few of the relationships together, but you know, football, when I go back to Jean-Claude Beaver, because it was his original idea, football, football is an influence in, in society. And 10 years ago, or 15 years ago, I think we started in 2005, 2006, people looked at, at football as a blue collar sport. And they forgot that the people in the boxes and the owners and the players were consumers. And uh, that's how he turned the game. You know, he, made, he found a, a niche in the market and he said, listen, football is a global sport. Influences, creates notoriety, creates awareness. And at the end of the day, when footballers wear a product, and we've seen that, and you know, Robbie and many other people I've had the, you know, the luck to live with, influence millions of people around the planet. And that, you know, again, we go back to the economic situation today where football builds billions of dollars of business. Forget about the sponsoring side, which I was involved in, but you know, without football, we're not, people, the fans, the guys that sell hamburgers, that sell beers at the games, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's an industry, a global industry, betting, whatever you want, shirt sales. I mean, you know, with all respect to the US, you know, basketball and baseball are very limited around the world in the countries they're strong with, where soccer or football, as we call it, is a global industry. When you say global, um, that's important as who blows a global brand. So it really assisted in making, in building who blow in a global brand. Now, Jean-Claude Beaver had this vision at the Euros, I think it was 2000, I can't remember, I think it was 2006 in Switzerland and Austria. Uh, being involved with the Swiss national team, and that was the start. And then it was Man United with David Gill and um, Sir Alex Ferguson. And they, I, mean, I did the Mexican the Federation, and then through our mutual friend of, um, of Robbie the Great, PK, you know, brought Pele on board, and um, it just grew, you know. And then was Maradona, et cetera, et cetera. And it's been a, a global phenomenon where Hublo is the brand of footballers or the football world like some brands of the world of golf or sailing. So you know, it was a vision there that Jean-Claude Beaver had and uh, we ran with it and we adopted it. And I think, you know, Robbie would agree, you know, in the world of football, who blows a reference for footballers? One of yeah, the absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you've seen all the, I've been lucky enough to, to know Rick for, for a long time and I've been involved in, um, you know, events that, that he did and the, the amount of, you know, ex, players that go legends is, is, is incredible. And I said, it's a, it's certainly a special brand for, for certainly for football, as we've seen, you know, over the last, uh, not the last number of years. One of the coolest events I ever was at, was at Basel Fair in Switzerland, where Ublo organized a football match with Robbie Maradona. You even had Usain Bolt play. Um, tell us about that experience, Robbie, um, to do it. Yeah. Yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, I think as anyone knows me, I love I love playing these little these little charity games and 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 what have you. And of course, to to be associated with the uh, you know the Maradonas of, of of this world and Mourinho was the was was there and all these top top uh, you know big icons in the in, in the game and to be uh, to be around it was was great. And as I said, it was a great it was a great event. And and you know these these, these events are always good. They're always good because. You play against players for for many years, and then you you haven't seen them for a long, long time, and then when you do see them, you go back into chatting about football like you've, you you did before. So uh, it's always good to see them, and it's amazing because when we play these games, it's um, you would think because you know all, all of us are retired, that would be you know just a walk in the park, and that people wouldn't be kicking each other and taking a you know, taking a foot off the gas, but it's completely opposite. <laughs> people, people smashing each other, and people want to win. Even in these little small events, the the uh, how the, I think the pitches are like maybe three on three, sometimes four on four, and uh, the amount of kicking that goes on, and and the desperation to win, you know, never never leaves football. 
Rick, how did you guys meet, uh, you and Robbie? Well, King Dan's a legend of Spurs, you know. I'm, he probably doesn't remember. I remember of his friend that I met him, and he was playing at the time. He was actually with Dean Richards. And uh, I met him in the St. St. Albans Hotel. I can't remember what it was called. I think, Keena, you were staying there. You probably didn't even know who I was. Yeah, yeah. I was, I, I, when, I first signed for, when I first signed for Tottenham, I was staying there. God rest his soul. Yeah. Dean Richards, one of my yeah. closest friends. And, rest in peace. You know, you know, yeah, he was a, you know, one of my close, close mates. And, you know, such a shame what, you know, what happened to him. And, and I'm always in, always in touch with his family and, and stuff. So, uh, even now, he's got two lovely, two lovely lads who are grown up now. Uh, yeah, but me and Dino used to, Dino lived in St. Albans and I lived there. So, uh, you know, we used to, we used to hang out quite a bit around the, around the area. A lot of, you know, Italian restaurants we used to go to. So, Kino was obviously, a, he was the captain of my team and, and PK actually, he's not online, but we'll meet him soon. He was um, introduced us. I think um, it was actually it was one of the bo the first boxing that one of the first. Well, no, it was his was it his wedding, Kino? I can't remember. It's it a good few good few years ago, and it? it was a long time ago. So um, yeah, we just we just we, we met through PK anyway. But I don't know where where it was, and then obviously you know me and Rick uh, became really really good friends, and and. Um, you know, Rick is a character. He's a good person to be around him. You know, we go to a lot of events together. And of course, we go to the go to the boxing. I think the last boxing match we went to was uh, was Conor uh, Conor McGregor and, and and Mayweather in in, in Vegas. So uh, you know, that was you know that was something special. But for as as two boxing fans, the two of us go there, especially someone you know Conor you know from uh, from Dublin, also to to, to, to see him in Vegas and. Uh, you know his his face ev everywhere, and to, to fight one of the, the greatest fighters, you know of 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 all time, and in, in, uh, in his way, uh, was cer was certainly great to see him. I said me 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 and Rick had a good time there with PK. And that was PK's fiftieth birthday, right? That weekend. Yeah, yeah, and coincided. We're lucky it coincided with <laughs> uh, with the fight, which was perfect. So we didn't plan that, did we, Rick? <laughs> you probably forgot, but I walked in with you um, and PK outside to Connor's um, after party after the fight. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, yeah that, that, that been on court, yes. I yeah, the uncle, yeah that, was, no, that was good. That was good fun. Speaking of boxing, because I know Rick's into boxing. Um, that's huge. But he asked me to ask you this question because he said you love fighting. Um, I remember. No, no, no. I, do, I, love, I love fighting. You like boxing. You like the I boxing. Sport, I like it? watching. I like watching boxing. Yeah. What about Gypsy King? Were you happy to see Gypsy King win too? Are you a fan of Gypsy King? Also? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I thought his, his I thought his performance against uh, Deontay Wilder uh, was absolutely unbelievable. Um, dominated the fight. Uh, listen, I'm not. I'm not suggest for one second. I'm the. Uh, I know everything about boxing, but I do enjoy watching it. Um, and I thought in that in that fight, he was he, he was tremendous. Uh, I think Wilder didn't. Didn't have a sniff at him at all. I think from from the first the the, the first round till the last, he absolutely dominated the fight. And you know, he certainly looks like he's back back to his best. He's fitter than fit than ever. And I think like like any boxing any boxing fan, I think everybody wants to see the big one between him and and, and Anthony Joshua. So uh, I'm sure that will be on the build. You know, maybe in the next year, a couple of years. Rick, you're a fan of Gypsy King. Who wins that fight, uh, Gypsy King or Anthony Joshua? I mean, you know, I think boxing is like today has become a little bit like the UFC. It's, it's showtime, you know. And I love what Gypsy King does. I, I mean, I've got a lot of respect for Eddie Hearn. I think he's a phenomenal promoter. But if it came down to a fight, I mean, Gypsy King's got a lot of talent, you know. He's, if he's on his day and he's right on his day, what he did to Wilder on that second fight was unbelievable. Unbelievable. And Wilder has got the punch and the biggest punches outside of Tyson. And I was like shocked how, um, how um, Gypsy just took that fight. It was amazing. Did, did you see, uh, Rick, did you see uh, the, uh, online in the last couple of days, Mike Tyson? Yeah, amazing, huh? <laughs> how sharp is he? But I, I, I'll tell you a story, Robbie. I mean, I don't know if Seth, you were in that meeting and uh, in that dinner. We had a dinner with uh, Mike. And, you know, we've got a very close relationship with Lennox Lewis. I support his foundation. And uh, 
we had a, I think, it, I, I, I may not be wrong, it may have been that weekend of a McGregor fight. And Mike Tyson came along and he wasn't right. He wasn't, you know, it's, these guys, if they were focused, if they were, you know, and I guess, you know, you can't be a champion with problem free, but it really like, I had this, this image of Tyson in the ring and I met Tyson, we spent a night. Were you there? And, and I, I know Kamal was there. Were you there, Seth, in that dinner? Uh, no, come on, was. Oh. So anyway, yeah, I, I was, yeah, I think, I think Tyson's back to his best in the sense that he's, he's making money. I think his business, he's got, um, he's invested in some um, marijuana. Herbal, should we say. <laughs> Herbal, should we say. Exactly. Yeah, I don't want to say the word, but yeah, you know, good luck to him. You know, for me, he's one of the greatest, but you know, you can be at the top and you can be at the bottom. It's very, you know, sad, you know, but. Great fighter, great champion, you know? Speaking of Conor McGregor, um, one of the things I like about you, Robbie, um, with also Rick too, is charity and philanthropy is very important to you. Um, you and your wife just donated your greenie, Ublo, and a late jersey to raise money. Um, Conor McGregor donated $20,000, and the foundation has raised uh, more than $70,000. Um, ne nearly, nearly 70. So if anyone's watching, they can keep, they can keep donating. And by, by the end of this week, um, we're going to pick some for the, for the winner for the watch and for the jersey. But that was uh, obviously very, um, very generous in, of, of Conor. Uh, to donate that, you know, as we know, he's a he's a big big football fan. So uh, I said, uh, you know, I'll get him something, get him something special. But you never know; he might he might win the watch. He might win the he might win the watch and the jersey. Who knows? Mm. So uh, and if if he doesn't, of course, I, I will I will get something nice from. But that was that of course it was very very generous and to you know that's gonna go a long way to help our, our hospital heroes here in Ireland um, to help help the frontline workers who, as I said before, who's been doing a tremendous job, you know, to, you know, fighting in the front line for their safety. Um, and the charity's been absolutely uh, gone great. As I said, as soon as we, as soon as the money comes in, it goes straight back out, um, you know, for, for equipment, you know, for the front line workers. And as I said, it's gone great. And I said, this is the last week. So if anyone wants to keep, keep donating in with a chance to win the, the watch and the jersey, I'll be, um, I'll be picking a winner. And if you could just clarify, it's going to where now? Um, it's because I you said it, but I wanted um, if you. Could. It's going to at, at our hospital heroes. Okay. In Ireland, so basically all the all the frontline workers who who's, who's put the as I said before, themselves uh, at risk to, for for their safety, were doing a tremendous job. So uh, it's the least that we can do. And I think, you know, when you're in a situation like I have, and I've, I've been doing this for a long time, I've been fortunate enough to uh, to do something for. Crumlin Hospital also here in, in, in Dublin that I used to, to go to as a kid and raised over, I think, nearly over 350, 400,000 for them, uh, which, is, which is great. Uh, try and help as much as I can. And I think if you're in a position that I am that, you know, has a little bit of a voice and, and, and that can get around people and, and, and try and do as much as I can. And of course, I, I would always do it and I will continue to do that. I think that's an amazing story. Um... And it's great to see the leadership of Connor and you in, in your home country. And that's great that uh, Connor uh, contributed $20,000. So that's a great story. Yeah, it was. It was, yeah, it was very generous of him. I got to tell you that, you know, I've been very lucky to work with a lot you of... Said, you, you, said, you said you got your hair cut today. <laughs> <laughs> I got fucking gel, though. That's the problem. <laughs> Now, I got, I got to tell you one thing, um, and, you know, thanks to Seth, I met uh, Audie, who manages um, Connor. And I went to Ireland um, about two years ago to talk, to meet Connor. And I think, you know, he is just an amazing personality. Amazing, you know, sometimes you've got to forget what the press writes, but as a sportsman and as a person, on a one-to-one, -one, amazing person. Yeah, it's been know, great for sport. It's been great for sport, especially the UFC. It's been unbelievable for us. You know, you know, Kino is like Ireland for such a small place. You've got you've had a country you've had like yourself, Connor, Bono from U2, you know, Van Morrison. There's so many legends that come out of Ireland. It's, mm. it's, it's like what the, what do they put in the mother's milk? <laughs> now we're very lucky, you know, very 
very unique uh, country, and uh, as I said before, we have, we have a lot of lot of people come out here and, and being very successful and and done a done a hell of a lot. And as you said, U uh, two for example, one of the greatest bands of, of of all time. Not just that, but you know, four great lads also. So yeah, we've been we've been we've been very lucky in this country, and, and may we continue to uh, you know get more people being successful, which I'm sure. It, there will be because we've already seen it. The, the the young up and coming stars and uh, the young football players and the young sports are the Gaelic players and, and, and the GAA. So uh, there's a lot of good people in Ireland that, uh, that that do a lot for the country. Pal, you're very close with the Prime Minister of Ireland. Have you made a no, call? The, no, the president. No, not the president. The president. Uh, I'm not I'm close to him. No, I've. I tell you what the story was that we when we um, we went to the White House after in America when when you win the championship you go to the, go to the White House and I was very fortunate enough to go to go three times. Um, so with the what, Obama? Yeah, uh, Obama. Yeah. Um, three times. Huh? Three times with Obama. Yeah. So 2014. So and then we the the Galaxy wanted to do a trip over here. Uh, in Ireland, you know, we had a game and I think it was in Sweden. So they wanted to come here for a week and ask me to organise it, what I organised a game and, and a training ground and what have you. Um, so I said, oh, and two weeks before, a week before that, we were in the White House. So all the lads were in the White House and then you go into a room in the White House, you just stand there, everyone goes around the circle. And I, I was the captain, so the captain's allowed to go into a different room and obviously... Uh, uh, Bex was there the year before, the year year before, or two years before that. So he was obviously allowed to go in because you know I think Bex was probably on forced terms with Obama. So usually <laughs> the captains would go in and uh, you go in privately and you just into the room and chat them for 10, 15 minutes, and then the other players in a different room and then they're all around the circle and you come around shaking hands. He's brilliant, I have to say, very very uh, thing. But you can imagine the security there before you get in is is crazy. So it takes you know, hours to, to get in, ID and what have you. Um, so I managed to speak to Air President and I said, I'd love to bring the lads, you know, to to his house. And uh, the, 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 the green house, yeah. The difference, the difference was incredible. So we pulled up on the bus right outside the front door um, and he was there to, to greet us all. Went into his in, in, into the room, stand around, just every, relaxed. The lads were going out to walk his dogs in the garden. He was <laughs> he, he was ta he, he was taking selfies. He was taking selfies with with the lads. Uh, he had tea, biscuits, wine, uh, Guinness, cake, sandwich, sandwiches. No, no, no Guinness. Uh, he had all that for the for the players, and the, the players couldn't believe the difference between. Going to the White House, and obviously, of course, you appreciate going to the White House, but you couldn't believe the difference how, how relaxed and, and, and laid back uh, the president was. And they, they really enjoyed it. The lads, even now, they, they, they always text me about send me pictures of it. So it was, uh, that, was, that was incredible, certainly for, for me as an Irishman, and of course, for, for the lads coming over from America. What was it like um, playing with Beckham? I mean, LA and Beckham made that winning team so special. Tell us about that. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, I was for 31 when I went to LA Galaxy. Um, uh, David came to to Tottenham for for training for a, for a couple of months just to keep fit before he before he went back. And um, just he asked me as we were training, he asked me would I be would I be interested in going to uh, to America? And I said yeah, I would eventually. Yeah, and then. Literally a couple of months later, he, he called me out of blue and said, "Listen, we, we we want to sign you." I was good. It was the right time for me, I think. And then, uh, so he was the one that orchestrated the the whole thing. And without him, I, I I probably wouldn't have gone. He was the one that changed the face of of, of MLS and um and certainly uh, made my uh, me going there a lot easier because because he was there, and we you know we became obviously obviously friends and we were very successful in 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 what we did. And what we done, so he was certainly uh, huge for where the MLS actually is now. Because without him, uh, the MLS wouldn't have the rise it's had, and it's only going to get bigger, and it's going to continue, I think, to, to get bigger. And since 
you know, he was one of the first, I would think I was the, one of the, the second one, if you like, uh, from Europe. And then after that, there's loads of players, Kaka, Stevie, Lampard, Pirlo, uh, Henri. So there was a lot of, you know, players wanted to go. And I, and I think that a lot of players, even now, uh, you know, are desperate to go there because a lot of people ring me up and ask me about it. When we spoke with our Rio a couple of days ago, he said what's lacking in MLS is the money. You know, once, like, you know, the, there's more money in Europe. What's your thoughts about that? It's, yeah, because of, because of the salary cap, of course, of, of the designated players. Obviously, the three designated players uh, can, can get whatever. Um, and then there's the salary cap. I, I believe they, they put up more. Um, but I think the demands of the league, I think it's only going to grow. So I think the, the MLS, the commissioner, will have to maybe have to look at that at some stage and maybe to continue to put the money up to make it even even bigger. Uh, of course, if they if they do that, I think it's a no-brainer that, that the MLS could be could be a massive um, a massive league. You spoke very but I'll get to, to the level of, of in Europe, you know, it will take a long, long time. Um, but they're certainly on the on, on the right track and it's a fra- it, the franchises everybody wants a, the franchise over there. Everybody wants to be a be involved in it. Every play, most players in Europe, you know, 28, 29, 30, you know, is starting to think about going to the MLS rather than, than anywhere else. Now, and it's, I, I was very conscious of that as well because I didn't want to go to, that's, I could have stayed in the Premier League and played a few more years, but I wanted to go and make, it, make a difference. I wanted to make a, an impact. So one thing I would say is to people that if they do think about going over, is that don't think you're going there for a holiday. Because it's a tough league. It's a very, very tough league. Uh, the American lads are, are fit. Um, uh, it's non-stop. It's very hectic. So, I people, I speak to people afterwards, and they're, they're, they get a bit of a shock because of that. So, my advice would be: don't, don't think you're going there for a holiday or there for retirement because you'll be found out quickly. What was it like, uh, Rick, watching um, Beckham and Robbie play? For LA Galaxy, for you, for MLS, were you watching more games in MLS? Yeah, I mean, I, I watched him a lot because he was such a legend in England and at my club. That um, I went out and we had a good night. We won't talk about the aftermath of the night, but um, <laughs> legendary that night. But um, it, I agree with Robbie. It was a tough league. It's very physical, and um, you know, some of those, some are not grass pitches. Some are on the, they play on the artificial grass and it can be fast. There's a lot of Latin players there. I mean, Robbie will tell you, you know, it's, it's not injury free. Mm. And, um, I think the challenge in America is like, I mean, you've got basketball, you've got baseball, you've got football. How do you make, and it's very strong as a, a female sport. I mean, they are the leaders, you know, the winners. And, you know, I've seen all this that's going on at the moment on the news about equal salaries. Um, how can the U.S. men's team be competitive on an international level? And they've been a few World Cups, haven't they, Robbie? The last... Yeah, yeah. But they've been World the... Cups. And they haven't, done, they haven't done too bad. No, no, no. South Africa, they beat England. Yeah, no, they've done well. And, of course, the, the World Cup is going to be in America soon as well, so... But the league in itself, and again, when in football, you know, if you look in England, how how players are produced from a, such a young, early age, and then the scouting becomes international at perhaps 13 or 14 to bring players in. I mean, I don't know in the US, and Robbie, you know better than me. I mean, how is the academies in America? How do they, how do they have players coming through? Because normally it's through college, right? Yeah, yeah. They had, now it's getting, it's getting a lot better. Uh, obviously, they go through a draft system. The young players from from college, but now the the, the Galaxy especially have uh, a lot of young players now uh, coming through, um, which are which are doing well. Um, I think a lot of them are now looking are looking at the the academy system like they do in um, in Europe. I think that's only going to help them uh, because the Galaxy they want to or the Galaxy or any any team in the MLS, you know, they want the homegrown players coming through. Uh, that's where they'll get more satisfaction from. It's like in England when we had the time where, you know, Beckham's came through and uh, the Neville's and, and, and what have you. And myself with the national team, for example, myself, Damien Duff, Richie Dunn, Shea Gibbon, Ian Hart, all around the same, the same time. 
I think that's important to to a country and a club that you do get th- them kind of players uh, coming through. And I think Galaxy are definitely trying to do their best uh, to have one of the best academies, you know, in America. And that's only going to help them as you know, certainly as a franchise and uh, as a team to get better. You think Beckham's going to make a huge impact? Be like a hands-on um, owner in Miami? Yeah, no, no, David, uh, he, he will. He's uh, he's not one to to, to, to sit back. He, he want to get involved, get his hands dirty, of course. And we've seen already, you know, in the last in the last uh, certainly in the last few months since it, 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 it's got up and running. Of course, it's been it's a long process for him. I know that, uh, but it's there now. And and of course, he will definitely be involved uh, heavily in in a lot of stuff. Of course, he'll, he'll leave certain stuff to other people. But, you know, to have someone like David involved in it, and, you know, especially for the players, uh, because it's okay having an owner who's, who's never played the game. But if you've got someone who's one of the best players of, of, of all time um, that you can bounce off and maybe have a conversation about if things are not going well for the team. He's been there, he's done it uh, at, the, at the highest level. So there's no better person to to give you advice, you know, when things are going bad. And he's done, he's done it in both. He's done it in Europe and he's done it in America. What are the jerseys that are behind you? What are those jerseys? Oh, I've got a few. that's the Irish jersey there from the World Cup. Uh, that's Luka Modric, Sedan, um, Mar- uh, Messi. So all, all the players are swapped with. There's a few more there. And there's, a, there's a few there. So uh, it's more for my, for my son because he, he, he he loves, as I said, he loves football. So, and um, a lot more jerseys upstairs. He wants me to put up, but <laughs> uh, we won't have any, any any room left. So I like when Rick asks some questions. Rick, why don't you ask uh, Robbie some questions? Some of your personal questions. Okay, so personal questions. This is a good one here. The four-four against Arsenal. Do you remember that game? Chelsea. No, Arsenal. The David Bentley goal. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't play in that game. Oh, fuck it. That was a bad question. I, I, I was gone. No, no. When, when the volley, it was some volley. You weren't playing. You, you were Spurs at the time, though, weren't you? No, I left. I just left just before that. I'm sure, okay. I left. I wasn't I didn't play that game. Okay. Move Do the homework, Rick. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's not good. Let's go back to the big game. November 18th. Thierry Henry. For Ireland, you mean? Yeah. I mean, it's one of, it's one of those let, things. Let me ask you a question. Spurs, what? you're a proud Irishman. You scored at Parc de Prince, right? You scored, or was it? Yeah. It's scored to make a 1 1. Yeah. And, it's, and he's admitted to the players that he's cheated, right? The handball. Mm. How do you take that as a professional? I mean, again, Listen, as for for that, you know, I was just I wasn't disappointed that because there's nothing we could we could have done a better. So the only thing I was disappointed at that we didn't go to, to the tournament, to yeah. be honest with you. So no matter what what happened, what he did, we couldn't change it. So I couldn't we couldn't change that that you know, we couldn't take that we couldn't we couldn't take it back. So um it was one of those things, uh unfortunate for us. But do I think about it? No, I'm not that kind of person. Uh, I'm fairly focused on, on forward what I think about for the future. So at the time, good because not the handball, just good that we, did, we didn't make it to, to a major, major tournament. Um, I'm sure if you'd asked a lot of people in Ireland, uh, disappointed, of course. Um, you know, he, 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 Henri is a fantastic player, one of the best in, in, in the Premier League. So... Was it, did he cheat or did he, was a reaction? I haven't got a clue. I, I've never heard him publicly say, so I, I, I don't know. But listen, I, I've, I've played against him after that so many times. Um, I said he was, a, he was a great, great player. But it was just one of those things that we didn't, we didn't get to the, to, to, to the World Cup. That was the most disappointing thing. It's sad. I mean, I think the Irish, you know, like a little bit like the Scottish world, all the Celts have got amazing fan following. And what a disappointment. Yeah, you've seen the Irish fans over over the years, all the tournaments I've played in, and even like the the away games, the, the support, and and not even that. What they do when they do go away is, you know, when they're we've seen in in, in Poland when when 
singing to the baby on the on the on the train uh, in Paris. Uh, you know, fi fixing someone broke down, fixing the fixing the car and, and stuff like that. A lot of you know great little stories like that, and that's what they do. They Irish people don't go away to cause problems. They go away to have have a good time, and by having a good time, they want to have a good time with their own people, but also the people of of that country, which was Poland and 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 France. So. They've always well travelled uh, and always always behaved very very well. I know, mate. I mean, listen, Paddy's Day, like today, which is uh, Cinco de Mayo. You know, all my love mm. to all the Mexicans. I mean, the Irish and the Mexicans are people that have emigrated around the world and they give so much love and worked hard. And a lot of people in menial positions in America, uh, mm. especially. And you know. I've always been so welcome in Ireland. I mean, you know, it's just amazing how people are. Yeah, you love it, don't you? Every time, you know, you've been here a few times to visit me and and, and what have you. So it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a great country. And hopefully, when you know this, this is all sorted, uh, we can come over again and we can we can have a few glasses of red wine. No dinner's here, but I've got a little bit of cognac. <laughs> Good luck, Pino. Got a couple of questions for you, and I don't want to bore you too much, but I mean. Your relationship, I think, with one of the biggest rock stars in the world, Bono, is it's a low-profile relationship. But give me three songs of Irish musicians that have influenced your career or influenced uh, the person. Well, but I Irish. think you, you, you two, you know, universally massive, of course. And the streets have no name. In, incredible. Um, what I like about the lads is that they're just... When, when you're with them, they're so, they're so down to earth, considering what they've done in their career and uh, the longevity that they had. Uh, you know, I've seen them many times in America. You know, they invited me to the concert and, and in, in Ireland also. Um, of course, of course, them, but in Ireland itself, you've got some great musicians, you know, great musicians. Uh, you know, Mary Black is an uh, Irish singer, one of my favourite. Uh, Christy Moore, uh, unbelievable ballad singer. So, with this, there's so many to mention that we, we're very lucky in Ireland that we, we have, ah, huh? Cranberries. Yeah, the cranberries. We've got so many. There's, there's so many to uh, to name, and um, we're very, as, as you as you said before, we're very lucky that in Ireland that we have uh, a lot of good people coming out and, and doing really good things, and, and and music is a big part of everybody's life in Ireland. You know, we we were all brought up, and my father was a my father was a singer. Um, You're a no, singer. Yeah, I don't mind that I'd sing some now and again. But when 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 you went years as a kid, you know, growing up, going to the going to the pubs uh, with, with with the family, all your family together, your uncle, your uh, aunties, uncles, your your cousins, and all together, you know, and having to sing song. My old man, of course, would be the first one to uh, to start it. So um, it's, it's just just Irish Irish tra tradition. So we've been very lucky in Ireland. To me, there's not a better walkout song than Sinead O'Connor with Conor McGregor. Yeah, that definitely put goosebumps up. I love Conor. I think he's brilliant. Yeah, that Sinead O'Connor song is, is, is definitely a, a song that gets the hairs in the back of your neck to standing up. Well, also, Ireland fans are, are hopeful too, even at the McGregor Mayweather fight. I mean, you were there for a couple of days. They were, they were in full force, they flew yeah. out. And they actually thought he was going to win. I mean, they... Yeah, they... so did I. I. I mean, you you can never never go against an Irish man. Absolutely no chance. Um, <laughs> but the, 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 crowd, the crowds there, we were in the hotel, Rick, and the amount of Irish people that was there was, you know, was incredible. And a, lot, a lot of them were there that, that didn't have tickets either. They just went just to, you know, just to, to feel the atmosphere. Um, and, and they were brilliant around the hotel. They were, they were fantastic. The same as they always are around... Uh, Enjoying himself, having to sing song and not causing any problems. One of my biggest regrets was never getting Connor on board. Yeah. We had, discuss had discussions, but you know, business is business. That's but, it, Pop. Uh, he impressed me. He impressed me a lot. I mean, you know, he's, um, you've met him and, you know, Seth's met him. And thanks to Seth, we had, uh, you know, we did, um, some sessions, uh, photo sessions, but he's um, him and his management are amazing people. I've got a lot of respect for him. Yeah, no, they're good, good people. What I like about him though is like when um, Robbie did that project, he gives the money. He's very, he's um, 
he's really showed leadership in the last, you know, in the community in Ireland. So it's good that he's actually, you know, being positive in the country in this crazy time. Yeah, absolutely. No, he's been good. As I said before, he's been, uh, been very, very generous uh, with his donation. and We're very, very grateful. I have another question. Um, you're in management now in the soccer world, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's the path I'm going down. You know, I've been fortunate enough to have a good, you know, a good career, you know, for 20, 20 odd years. Uh, and now going into the next, the, the next phase, of course, I've been, been you know, doing it now for, you know, over a year, I've been assistant manager, I've been enjoying it. Uh, the other side is, is certainly a lot different than, than, than playing. So, um, really enjoying my time at, at Middlesbrough. Uh, fantastic club with a great owner, and St Steve Gibson and, you know, Jonathan Woodgate, uh, who I've, Obviously, I know very, very well. Played, played with a friend of mine as the manager. So uh, it's gone well. Like anybody, as I said before, we're looking forward to to, to hopefully getting back and resuming uh, playing when it's when it's uh, safe uh, safe to do so. But it's uh, I'm enjoying it, and it's it's I've got all my coaching badges now. Of next in May, uh, end of this month, I think I, I received my pro license, uh, and that's that's all I'm done. So. Uh, it's been a good few years now d doing the license. It's not easy. So it takes a pro license takes eighteen months, and the A and B is, is, is a couple of, a couple of years. So it's been going on. I started doing them when I was in America when I came back in January uh, for for a couple of weeks and started them about five years ago. So uh, really enjoyed it. Thankfully now it's uh, it's it's done and, and I received the pro license. And then um, you now it's been a long process, but one that I've, I've certainly enjoyed. Okay, now you're going to manage Miami. I think Beckham will give you a job in Miami. <laughs> I think he's got his own, own manager already. Of course, listen, I've, I've made no no secrets of the future. I'd like to be manager but at the moment. Uh, I'm really enjoying, uh, you know, being being assistant. Um, you know, I was in I was in I was on holidays last last year in Dubai. And my old manager was there, Marcello Lippi, and um, I was legend, legend. good friend. Yeah, good friends with his son, uh, Dave. David and um, so I was just chatting away and he just asked me what am I up to blah, blah, blah. I was coaching and stuff and he just said take take your time uh, no rush you know coaches managers if, if you're lucky around for 20 30 years so there's certainly certainly no rush so I, I definitely took that on board um, and I'm in, I'm in no rush I'm enjoying what I'm doing I'm enjoying uh, at Middlesbrough um, and I look forward to the, to the future but at the moment uh, for me now, it's 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 learning, so it's it's picking up everything from from people that have you know what I'm doing. Uh, when I was with Mick McCarthy as well, I learned a lot from him. Uh, obviously, I learned a lot from myself from Woody being in the championship because the championship is, you know, as you know, it's a it's a it's a tough league, and it's a, if you do get out of the league, it's you know it's very very rewarding because of the finances uh, financially, and then of course you know, to play. Uh, in the Premier League for, for, for these players, which mean uh, Woody was was very lucky to do so. Um, I'll take my time, and then I'm, as I said, I, Rick, as you know, Rick, you know, going to speak to the manager, speaking to uh, as Pochettino was in that Spurs, and hopefully get to see Mourinho and, and different managers, and just get ideas from them, and 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 basically pick their brains for you know for me going forward. Kino, who manages the house? You or Claudine? <laughs> Who do you think? The missus. <laughs> <laughs> they all do. Don't be silly. Uh, uh, now I, I manage the lads. I keep I keep an eye on the on the on the two lads and making sure that they're, they're right and they're not killing each other and taking them out of the house and, and trying to keep keep them occupied, especially now, because uh, I think they're going off the walls now that they're not seeing any friends. Hudson's a little fighter, isn't he? He could be a boxer. No, oh, you never know. Yeah, he's a little. He's he he doesn't mess about. I tell you that. Well, Robbie, I know you're busy and um, I really appreciate your time today. Um, I think you have an amazing story and I can't wait um, to see you one day as the manager of Ireland's national team. So I, I wish you continued success in your ventures um, in the next part of, of soccer. So thank you so much again. And Rick, you're the best. Is there anything you'd like to sign off on Robbie? I got I got a really bad question. I don't know if Robbie's gonna answer. So Beckham's kids called Brooklyn and Robbie's kids called Hudson. 
Is there any relationship for the names? <laughs> you know, I didn't even, I didn't even think of that. You know, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Football banter. I know, no, I mean, uh, Hudson. Hudson was the name we uh, we heard somewhere when we were in America, and straight away we just uh, Claudia and I was just like no relationship, no we, relationship. We in yeah. in River, <laughs> New York. All right, it's a joke. Mate. Don't take I think, it. Back. I think that cognac's strong, is it? <laughs> mate, listen. In these times, <laughs> you've got to have a good night's sleep and get up in the morning fresh. I know that's true. Clean Clean up. Up. Well, listen, lads, I appreciate you. It's good to see you. Thank and, you. Uh, God bless everybody in Ireland. Great people, strong people. And I always appreciate every time I go to Ireland how you take care of me and all the good people in Ireland. And we wish all of you the very best. Let's get through this shit all together, mate. All right? Yeah, same to you guys. Good to see you. I hope you see you yeah. soon. Have a great yeah. evening. Thank you. Cheers, Very lads. Good. Thank you. <laughs>